In Creo Parametric, you can copy features and then use the paste special command and you have three different options for the dependency. In this video, we're going to take a look at partially dependent for dimensions and annotation element details. And to be honest, this is one of those commands that I used to be apprehensive about teaching because it's one that I didn't use a lot. And it's one of those situations where Creo gives you a lot of different options, a lot of different flexibility, and it's very useful for edge cases. But that's the sort of thing that makes people say, hey, wow, Creo can be confusing to learn. But anyhow, let's go through copy and paste special with this dependency option. First, let me orient you to the features that I am going to copy and paste special, just so I can show you the ins and outs of this. Now, I'm going to copy and paste special a group of features. You don't have to do it with a group. I'm doing it with a group just for convenience. And so there is a sketch, which is a racetrack, and that sketch has a couple of different dimensions, which I have shown as annotation elements. Those are model dimensions, and so they are going to show underneath the feature that owns them. And then that sketch is extruded, and then we've got a couple of different holes and a round with a few edge references, and then an annotation feature. And so this annotation feature contains two different annotations, one with a note, and this is a parametric note. In other words, the note has a couple parameters in it. And there's also a surface finish that I am showing. Again, this is copy and paste special, partially dependent with dimensions and annotation element details. That's why I'm including annotation element details in this demonstration. And the last thing that I want to mention is that I created a couple parameters in this group, and those are the parameters that appear in the 3D annotation in the note. So I'm gonna right click on the group, and I'll go to the parameters command. You can see that I made up one called code, and it's a string, and it's got a value of the letter D, and then a one, another one called tag, and it's an integer, and it's got a value of nine, D9, as you can see on the screen. Okay, so those are the features that I am going to copy and paste special. So let me select the group and then you can right mouse click and hold and choose copy. Also, there is the copy command in the operations group in the upper left hand corner. And of course you can use the standard Microsoft keyboard shortcut of control C. So I will choose copy and then let's go to paste and paste special. It is the keyboard shortcut of control shift V. And you can also get to paste special from the right mouse button. When I click on that, we are going to get the paste special dialog box. And the first thing up here is whether it is dependent or not. Dependent is selected by default. And the option that is selected by default underneath dependent copy is partially dependent. In another video, I will show you an independent copy and I will show you fully dependent with options to vary. And then there are a couple of other different commands down here for locating the features in a different place. For simplicity, oops, for simplicity, I will use apply, move, rotate transformations. That is the easiest way to get your features into another location. And I've already covered that in a video. So let me click the OK button. And for the translation, for simplicity, let me select this edge as my motion reference. I will just grab and drag it out here a distance. And let's use a distance. Let me get a little bit of space in between here. Let's choose a distance of 100. And that is good. I'm just going to do one move translation, but you can do multiple translations and rotations in order to get the features where you want them to be. So now I will hit the check mark and we have performed that copy and paste special with partial dependency. Let's take a look at some of the different ramifications. First off in the model tree, you'll notice that we have a moved copy feature that's for the transformations. And then we have this group called copied group. And if I expand the copy group, then we can see the very same features that are in the 
original group of features and they have the same name, but then they've got a number in parentheses. So it's saying this is the second instance of sketch two, the second instance of extrude two, the second instance of hole three, the second instance of hole four, so forth and so on. You get what I am saying with that one. And I want you to pay attention to those names because I'm gonna show you at the end how the names end up being a little different if you use copy and uh, pay special with the other fully dependent option in there. Okay, so first thing to notice is that the 15 and 25 dimensions did not show up in the copy group. And that is because the model annotations that are shown, well, they are not going to be duplicated in the copy because they are dependent on the original. Now let's take a look at making a modification and I'll make a modification. Let's select the copied sketch and then I'll click on it and then use edit dimensions from the mini toolbar. And so I'm going to change this and I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. I'm gonna locate the dimension for the length of this feature. It is originally a value of 25. I'm gonna change it to 30 and hit the enter key and it gets a little bit longer. And it also updated that in the original. As a matter of fact, let me make a bigger change so that you can see it. Let me move these so that they're both on the screen at the same time so that they both change. So let me, where's that? Okay. So oh, again, I want you to see both of them at the same time. Okay, double clicked on the 30. Let me change it to 35 and both of them updated at the same time. So they are dependent. Doesn't matter if you change the original or the copy, they are both going to update. Let me click on the screen a couple times in order to force the regeneration. And you'll notice that here, that dimension change. Oh, I changed it to 36. I was trying it for 35, I mistyped. So anyhow, these are how the dimensions are dependent. You change one, it changes the other one in order to update. And let's also select, say, the annotation. And to prevent the screen from highlighting, let me go to my selection filter and change the annotation so that this is the only one that I'm capable of selecting. You'll notice in the mini toolbar, my options are limited. So basically, I can repeat this. I can create another annotation surface finish of this type. I can do a semantic query. I can add it to another annotation feature, or I could remove it from the state. If I hold down the right mouse button, I can select the owning feature. I can select the annotation element that's driving the details of the current one. Uh, another one for selecting the references and some other options in here for moving where it is. There is an option here for detail independent. I can make this independent of the original one that it is dependent on. So that is one thing to note. Uh, but if I actually want to change the surface finish, I have to go to the original one. And when I click on it, it opens up the dashboard for this particular feature. Let's go to surface finish customization. And instead of a roughness of 32, I want a roughness of 63. So let me type in that value and then click off of the screen. And you'll notice that the copied annotation updated as well. Again, with this option in pay special, it was dimension and annotation element details only. What that means is all the different attributes and options in the copied features are actually independent of the original. What that means is I can select the holes, for example, and then edit definition. And I'm going to change the depth option from blind to through all. And then I can hit the middle mouse button in order to complete that. And so now the hole on the right has a through all hole, but the original one on the left is the same blind depth. And I am getting a warning here that I am breaking a dimension dependency because there is a dimension that appears in the original that doesn't appear in the copied feature. So I will close out of that after taking note of that warning. And let's do it for the other hole as well. I will click on it, edit definition, and let's change the depth to through all, and then hit the middle mouse button to complete the feature. And again, we get the warning. I can close out of it. 
and you can see that again the holes on the right are through all but the holes on the left in the original are not through all they are the blind depth okay so now let's take a look at another thing that we can change one of the things that is not dependent on the original those parameters so just a reminder in the original boss if i right mouse click and hold on it i can go to parameters and there's that code and tag parameter and i will cancel out let's go to the copied group right mouse click and hold and go to parameters there and i can change the parameters here let's change this to e instead of d and let's change this tag from nine to five and click the OK button. But if we take a look at the annotation on the right, the annotation still has the same values as the original group because, again, this is the option for partially dependent with dimensions and annotation elements dependent on the original. It doesn't matter that I changed the parameters in the copy. Well, the annotation element, that note in here is still dependent on the original, this note right here. All right, let's see. Anything else that I want to mention about that one? Oh, yeah, for uh, making changes to the dependency, if I right mouse click on this particular one, well, there's no, there are no options or commands in here for that independence. But again, if I select the surface finish and right mouse click and hold, we can make this detail independent. And this one over here, right mouse click and hold, I can make that detail independent as well. So that is an option that you have. All right. So one thing that I mentioned earlier is that I tend to use the other option more. And I do want to show you the difference in the names of features in the model tree when you use the other dependent option. Let me select this boss. And I will right mouse click and hold and choose copy. And let's right mouse click and hold. And from the paste options, this is the regular paste. Here is paste special. And I will do fully dependent with options to vary. And again, I'll cover that in another video. There are lots of controls that you can have in that one. And let's do a move rotate transformations. I will click OK. And so first, let's do a translation along the same edge. And I'm going to translate it just a distance of 50. And let me add in a second one. Just move it a little bit away just so you can see that they are in different places. Let's drag it up here a distance of 50 as well. Five zero, And hit the check mark in order to complete the feature. And again, the only reason that I did that copy and paste special was to show you the difference in the names of the features. Once again, we got a moved copy because of the move and rotate transformations. Here we have the copied local group. You'll notice that it says local group this time instead of just copied group. But then I'm going to expand the features and see how the features have different names here. The individual features have the word copied in front of them when we did that fully dependent with options to vary. We have copied sketch here versus sketch two and then a two in parentheses versus the original sketch two and copied extrude three versus extrude two with two in parentheses and the original extrude two. And you can see how the other features in the fully dependent with options to vary have that copied word in front of the name of the feature. And again, in another video, I will show you all the bells and whistles that are involved with the fully dependent with options to vary. Now, again, I use fully dependent with options to vary more often. So there's actually a config.pro option if you want that to be the default choice. So to show you that one, I can go to file and then options, options, and let's go to configuration editor. I will use find. And for the keyword, I will choose to type in copy and hit the enter key. Let me make this a little bit wider so it's a little easier to see all the descriptions and the text inside of there. And so the option that I'm looking for is called default depth copy option. And it sets the default for copy dependency to either full or partial in both the mirror and paste special tools. 
and the default is dependency of dimensions and annotation elements, but from the drop-down list, there is the fully dependent option instead. And so I can add, change, and close, and then we can click OK. Yes, I can save it into my config.profile if I always want to use that. And we can check real quick if this results in immediate change or if you have to do a restart. Uh, so I can select this, right mouse, click and hold, and choose copy. And then right mouse, click and hold, and paste special. And oh, looks like it takes place immediately. We have dependent copy with fully dependent with options to vary. All right, so there, I hope you got that. It was a lot to take in. There are a lot of nuances about the different options for pay special with a dependent copy.